Hey YouTubers, Rob here for another Commodore 64 game. Sort of include the, I guess the uh, mini series, if you will, of uh, Afterburner and its clones on the 64. I'm looking at the the USA version of Afterburner. Um, so as I mentioned in the little ramble with the in the when I played the UK version of the game, um, particularly on the 64, there tended to be this you know game released by team in develop and released in Europe by a team, and developed and released in the US by a team. I'm going to pause for a moment. Just... Right. So, there tend to be this European and US divide. Um, and usually, the, U the European release tend to be better. But that's not the case with Afterburner. Um, this was actually developed by a European team, um, this Weeby Games team, um, but they, but it only got released in the USA. The biggest tragedy, tragedy is the fact that this utterly cracking title theme was composed by Maniacs of Noise, and it was only ever released in the States, which is a little, so it's a little disappointing. Now, the other thing is, so it is, unfortunately, the music's playing slower than it should, as, as usual, I'm emulating this on a PAL, I'm emulating a PAL C64 because that's what I'm used to and everything, all the, all the music is optimised to be played on an American machine. Um, so already the presentation's looking a lot nicer, you know, you've got a lot of, you know, these, the loading screen, you've got the, the other title screens, you've got, you know, you credit stuff, it's already looking a lot nicer, there's no, you know, UI Chrome here. Um, so let's dive in. Okay, the first downside is there's is the the music's not selectable, so you get this nice title theme. And it's actually, if you go through the high voltage C collection, um, I'll link that in the in the notes, um, and you actually listen to the to the actual complete song, to the complete soundtrack for uh, for this. There's a lot of really awesome music in there, but you unfortunately really only I haven't got far enough, and I haven't turned the the cheat the cheats on in this when playing for this video, to see all that. So now loading the first stage. Um, so the other difference is, this is actually based on the earlier version of Afterburner. Um, the arcade game, there was sort of, you know, after the V1 and the V2, and the V2 added the speed control, where you could speed up and slow down in game. Um, V1 doesn't have that. If you've ever played Ma Afterburner on the Sega Master System, that was also based on the earlier version. So here we go, take off time. One thing I like is, Full screen, no border, no border chrome or anything. Full screen, and also that interlacing effect. I don't know how well it's going to come out, but it makes the player sprite look much nicer. Um, so yeah, we're only limited to sound effects, but they're not, but they're not bad. Um, controls again, joystick in port two. Um, firing is handled a little different from the European game, um, and I'm not sure I like it as much. So you just tap the fire button to shoot your cannon instead of having it automatically fire to get a lock you could when the when a plane is flashing white you've got a missile lock and what you do is hold the and then to fire a missile you hold the joystick down for a fraction of a second let go and tap again and you've got a lock when the plane is flashing white now i'm not sure i like that um that much just because the white is a little subtle yeah Weird to say that I know. I would probably have made it a different colour to stand out. Um, I mean, honestly, I would have probably done an audio an audio beep as well. You know, that's what most. You can, though. You can. It, it must be said. You can use the space bar, and you don't have to worry about that that sequence. Um, it makes me really yearn for a. I like a custom joystick setup or a two button setup or something. The other thing is nice, you got ten lives and you've got this little nice to get ready transitions. The game feels a lot more polished than the UK version. Um and I don't know whether, you know and it feels a little more it's still a hard game. I mean, it's still an aftermath of being written for the arcades. But it's, it feels a lot more playable. Like it doesn't feel like averagey terrible. It's it's fun. I'm actually quite enjoy it. I had to. I was doing a bit of a quick play just to 
familiarise myself with the game earlier, and it was sort of like, mm, I need, to, I really should go and get this recorded, <laughs> and I didn't really want to stop. Um, and of course, you can do the barrel roll. Um, so here are we at the end of the stage. Normally, you, the European version would start, the Euro version you see would load, and now you get the, the, I like having the stats here, and then it loads the next stage. It feels, it feels a lot more complete, like I found, when I was playing the European version, and it may have been amplified because, for the sake of recording, I was using warp mode in the emulator during the, the tape loading. Um, you didn't sort of see all that happen, it didn't, you didn't feel like you were being rewarded for your kills. And I do admit, I kind of miss having things like the kill count and your score on screen all time, but, <coughs> pardon me, I've been battling a cough for the, been a bit of a cold for the last few days, so... I'm not 100%, but but I feel that the UK version, having that on screen, but at a reduced of the size of the play area, well, I think it's an interesting set of compromises, and I think this is a much nicer outcome. Oh! Yeah, it turns out if you hit, that's, uh, after, that's run stop. If you hit run stop, you get, you can restart. Um... I think they must have really used, really pushed the memory on the 64 here to get it all in there. I mean, it's, it's playable. I mean, even surprisingly, you know, it's running, what, 16% slower than it should be um, because it's a power conversion. It's still actually quite playable and quite fun. Um, you know, one thing I like is... You look at the missiles, they're a lot clearer than they were in I in the in the European release of Afterburner. Or Hellfire Attack. And I mean I still feel yeah, I didn't feel like I had no way to avoid that. And you know, that felt like a screw up. And I like the fact you've got plenty of lives, and, you know, I started with ten lives here. And it, it, it's all those little things that make this actually a much more solid game. Um I just really think it need, it it really feels like it needs that second joystick button. Um, I mean, personally, I probably would have made it function like the other two games in having. Oops, I didn't do that roll well. I would have made it function like the other games in that you auto fired the cannon, but had but then just used the fire button to launch missiles. That would personally be my preference. Um, I think the game would just feel a lot better with that because you know even like. Even if it was hold down the fire button to launch a missile, you know, you, you see that, for example, in other games like, I mean, the example I think of is Ikari Warriors, where you tap the fire button to use your your, your character's uh, primary gun, but then you hold down to launch a grenade. You know, that's a little more convenient than compared to Commando, where you always had to use the space bar to fire grenades. Um, and I think that's the thing here. If it was just a simple hold down for a couple of seconds when you have a lock, um, We'll hold out for a couple of seconds. Yeah, that that's my personal thing. Because I think it actually adds a step to the game that wasn't in the original game. I mean, playing Afterburner, you know, I've played it, emulated it through MAME a few times. Um, I don't remember having to prime the missiles. I remember just being able to just hit that missile button when you have a lock. You know, it takes away from the pace of the game. Admittedly, that pace isn't here. But we're looking at, you know, an 8-bit home computer when the game was designed for, you know, a very expensive custom hardware setup. And I feel that the team here have actually done something that's pretty impressive. Um, so I do have to say, yeah, this is what I say you have to check out. I mean, I'm being pretty satisfied with it playing it now. I mean, I've only... I never heard about this back in the day for obvious reasons, as, you know, back in the day, why would you even hear about games coming out in the USA? In fact... Um, yeah, we're talking about that USA Euro divide. Um, the only one I ever played back in the day was actually Street Fighter. Um, I played the US version, which had the nicer graphics of the two of the of the two versions. The PAL had the PAL version had really large, blocky sprites, but the the US version had much smaller. And they were a little more well defined. They'd rely on the you know using the the sprites the the sprite multiplying and well, lots of sprites put together, so it looked a little like the graphics are a little smaller, but they looked a little nicer. Um, neither game was still wasn't a fun game though, but 
But yeah, I just thought it was interesting. But that's a, that's the side back of the So, challenge wise, you know, as usual after burning, you've got to avoid the missiles being launched, front or behind. Now, I don't know how this will handle. That being said, um, we haven't come to the stage where we've got the rear firing missiles or fighters yet, and I don't know how those are handled here. Um, hopefully, I can get far enough. I mean, I feel relatively speaking, I'm doing better than I was playing the UK version. Ugh. Um, but yeah, the ground feels feels nice and detailed, and you don't get that, unlike the UK version, which had the the character mode for the missiles. You don't get the the background overriding, so it looks a little looks a little more polished. And I think that's the big thing I say about this game is that compared to the UK version, it feels a lot more polished. Um, speed wise, yeah, I think you really do need to. Um, I need to actually see what this feels like when I switch Vice, the Vice emulator over to, to emulate an American C64 just for comparison. Um, I'd love to actually try that. I may try that offline later and put some notes in the in the video description about how it fell. One thing that's nice is turning has actually been pretty easy. Um, basically just point up and just do a double, a double tap with the joystick. Which I couldn't get right when I was playing the European version. Ugh. Tell me when... Ah, I haven't got many lives left. Tell me when we're close to the end of the stage. Excellent. Stage three done. Oh, tell you it's definitely a, definitely a. Yeah, I have to admit, it just doesn't feel the same without without music in game, blaring in game. And I think, like, ooh, ooh, is this a night stage? Oh, refueling time. Okay. Ah, oh, cool. Refueling time. <laughs> oh, wow. That was definitely much different from the European version, where you just... Where it was pretty much on autopilot. You just watched it come in and refuel you. So that's actually a little more impressive to see that. Again, more, more, more surprises with this. Um, I have to admit, like I've said, I've never really played that much of this conversion before, and I knew it existed back in the... Back when I was actually... I only heard about back in the day when I was in the, the news groups and it came up in conversation that that Afterburner actually got a US conversion that was done by you know, this European team that was a heck of a lot better. So I was like, ooh. Yeah, this definitely feels like I'd want to have a joystick with auto fire and a hacked up cable that could. and a second joystick just to be able to trigger spacebar. You know, the way the C64 is wide up. Oh, that's game over. <laughs> Still gave me a bonus for my missiles. <laughs> Funny that. Well, let's see how the let's see how the game over sequence is. The other feel a lot more, like I said, I've been a lot more impressed with this. I really do have to admit, I quite enjoyed it. <coughs> Sorry for that again. Um, so I guess we'll see what the game over and high score is like. But failing that, that of course is the the USA conversion of Afterburner. This is pretty much the one you really want to get if you want to play it on your C sixty four. Um, despite you know being slightly slow because of, of not being fully fixed, this actually plays really well. It feels and while it's not quite the Afterburner experience you would remember or expect, 
It's still a pretty good experience on the humble C64. One to definitely check out. Oh, that's a nice game over picture. And we got that nice Maniacs and Noise tune again. So there we go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I look forward to bringing you another game next time. Uh, thanks for watching.